Okay, so here we're going to just look at the four basic techniques of watercolour. There are four. There's wet into wet, wet into dry, dry into dry, and dry into wet. Now, let me just give you a quick demonstration of each of them in turn, and then maybe we'll put them together and see how it works in a very quick fashion. So, for example, wet into wet. I'm just going to damp some of the paper here with a little bit of clear water. And then I'm going to take a little bit of light red, cadmium red, and I'm just going to drop that in. And what you notice is when you put colour wet into wet, see the way it spreads out? So it gives you a lot more softness. Whereas if I take the same colour wet into dry, where it's going into dry paper, and I do exactly the same thing, two things happen. One is, it doesn't go beyond the bounds of where the brush allowed it to go, and it holds its line, but also has a greater sense of intensity. So wet and wet tends to dilute the colour somewhat, wet into dry allows for much more strength and much more rigidity. From there, then, we have the idea of dry into wet. Now, for example, dry into wet is where, if we were painting, let's say, a flower, a poppy, and you've got this weight of colour, we have got this wonderful red, but what happens is that we have this extreme dark, this blackness, and we want to maintain that strength in the blackness. We don't want it to soften too much, but at the same time we still need it to soften. So what we do is we take a lot more black and no water whatsoever, and if I just drop the black, pure pigment, into the centre, what will happen is that the centre will remain dark, but the edges will still continue to spread out. So you can see that with the poppy, the idea the centre dark remains intense, but the edges still soften. Whereas if I were to try and do that on to dry, I wouldn't be able to get the softness at the edge, and so as such it wouldn't work. And then finally we have what's called dry into dry, which is where you're just scraping the colour very gently across the surface of the paper. So your brush is very dry, there's very little colour on it. So for example, we take a little bit of blue, a small amount of water on my brush, uh, not to have too much. So what I want this to do is I want this to skip across what I call the tooth of the paper, the surface layers. So all we're going to do is just skip it across, like so. And that's what you get. So you see the texture and the grain of the paper to a much greater degree. Now the brush, if I flatten it out, so it's not too spread out, same sort of idea. It gives us just the lines and the idea of the wet surface. So here we have wet into wet, which you can see is extremely soft, wet into dry, which is much more contained, dry into wet, which is intense in the middle, but softens at the edge, and then uh, dry onto dry. Let's put that into practice. So one of the things that people find difficult sometimes in terms of board painting watercolours is areas such as sky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a very, very simple sky. Taking some clear water, I'm going to just drop in some clear water here into this idea of a sky just to facilitate a little bit more simplicity. That's a very simple sky. I don't even actually have a reference. I'm just doing this as I go along. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow ochre, thin it with water, and just occasionally drop that in here and there just to give a little bit of warmth into the sky. Nothing too rigid, nothing too imperfect. The idea is that we use watercolour, or the idea of yellow ochre, just to give a little bit of warmth, leaving plenty of white space, and into that white space, I'm then going to take a little bit of blue, a touch of cerulean and the ultramarine. And I'm going to have that just coming in quite dark on the top, so again, just hitting it here and there. I'm not trying to be too rigid or too perfect with it. And the whole idea here is to let this do its own thing, not to get too involved, and then with the, the cerulean blue, paler version of it, thinning it out with a little bit more water, taking the excess off the brush, just towards the bottom, put in a little bit of softness, and again, more water, so the, the more you thin it, the softer it becomes, but the key here is not to fill it in too much, it's to let the the colours do all of the work for you. You have a very simple little idea. Now, once you put this down, you mustn't fiddle with it. If you fiddle, you lose it. Now, because that's working only in the areas I want it to work in, it stays in those spaces. It's not going to fall too much from there. If from there I wanted to, I could drop in maybe a little touch of violet to break that up a little. But for now, that's a very simple enough sky. It works. From there, taking a smaller brush, we're now going to work wet into dry. So I'm taking my blue again, going to add a little bit of violet, and we put in the idea of mountains into the space. Calm that down, let me take out the excess. Now, because I'm putting this onto dry paper, it's not going to go anywhere other than where I want it to go. If I let it touch off the sky, it would start to spread into the sky, but I'm not. I'm just going to solidly put that in there, and again, once it's down, leave it. Don't be messing around with it. So the idea of the little bit of violet into that space suggesting the suggestion of the background mountains, nothing too rigid, nothing too fiddly. And then from there, we have, once more, we'll take the idea of the dry brush and we'll run it in for the suggestion on the water. So I have very little colour on the brush and just leaving some light between the mountain and the water. Just taking advantage of that and then give a little bit more intensity I can now. So I want the suggestion of light coming in from the back. 
And I can come in and just build a little bit more strength into that space, leaving plenty of light coming through and intensify the foreground a little bit more. And that's a very simple but very effective way of just putting together the three combination techniques. So the wet into, or the, sorry, the wet into wet on the surface where we've damped the sky with clear water, we dropped the colours in. Wet into dry where on the mountain I went in and I just used the simple violet on dry paper and it holds its shape and form. And then the dry into dry where I had the dry brush across the surface here and then dropped it into that space giving a little bit more warmth and a little bit more value. The whole thing with watercolours is recognising the four basic techniques but more than that, it's letting the white of the paper do the work for you. I hope you got some uh, benefit from that. Thank you.